Hello everyone. I'm Eric Nessheim and I'm the Executive Director of Literacy Minnesota. Welcome to the 2020 Awards Celebration. This year's celebration looks a little different. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 situation and the temporary closure of the Minnesota Historical Center, our awards ceremony and Journeys Readings event is virtual this year. We're excited to still be able to celebrate with you. Tonight kicks off our series of videos with this video honoring the 2020 award winners and their wonderful achievements in literacy. Throughout the month of June, look for additional videos of published Journeys authors reading their original pieces. Literacy Minnesota is grateful for our relationship with the Minnesota Historical Center over the past several years, and we look forward to resuming those celebrations in person down the road. Special thanks to Literacy Minnesota staff members, Ellie Purdy and Kelly Rinda, who were instrumental in the actual publishing of Journeys. Thanks to Wendy Roberts, Debbie Cushman, Casey Payette, Kirsten Collins, and Kelly Rinda, who made this virtual celebration happen. And a very special thanks to Jim Raines, our amazing volunteer, who gave many hours to create this video for us tonight. Also, thanks to donors Mimi and Todd Burke, who helped produce the book through the Burke Family Fund in memory of Todd's late mother. Sincere thanks also to Gabriella, Bisola Olanaran, Lucy Pabst, and Christine Stevens, who contributed their time and skills to the planning, design, editing, and production of this book. And of course, I'd also like to thank you all for taking the time to join us virtually to listen to, support, and celebrate all the hard work and accomplishments of the award winners. So on behalf of Literacy Minnesota staff and board, I'd like to welcome you all. As you know, this evening we celebrate a group of amazing people who have gone above and beyond to share their time and talents to give others the opportunity that every human deserves. First, we'd like to recognize our two community partnership award winners. This award is given to organizations in the community that have developed especially successful partnerships with literacy programs and as a result, greatly enhanced services to learners. Our first award goes to the Spirituality Center, Sisters of the Order of St. Benedict, nominated by Jane Stevenson, ABE Program Coordinator at Central Minnesota Adult Basic Ed. The Spirituality Center has been hosting adult English classes since 2017 after a local St. Joseph organization approached Central Minnesota ABE about an unserved population of adults needing English classes in their community. The sisters at the Spirituality Center offered their location as a site for the classes, offering a warm, welcoming, and supportive setting for adult English learners as well as for volunteer instructors. They provided a main room for the students to meet two mornings per week, along with the space to store materials. The Spirituality Center is run by Catholic Sisters of the Order of St. Benedict at a Christian college, while the majority of the students attending the classes are of the Muslim faith. This has led to opportunities for learning about cultural differences and similarities. It has also provided awareness for the community members at large to learn about their new immigrant neighbors. The willingness of the Spirituality Center to offer English classes at their site twice weekly since 2017 has led to recently moving it from completely volunteer-led classes to being able to hire an ESL instructor and secure a permanent classroom location at the St. Joseph Community Center. The dedication of the sisters, volunteer tutors, and students created an environment that is consistent attendance and improving skills so that Central Minnesota ABE can continue to serve the students in St. Joseph. Thank you, Spirituality Center, Sisters of the Order of St. Benedict, for your partnership and support. Our second Community Partnership Award goes to East Lake Library, nominated by Nikki Carson, lead ESL teacher at Open Door Learning Center, Lake Street. Anna Zillinger, community librarian at East Lake Library, has been involved in Open Door Lake Street's book club since its inception in 2018. Anna helped establish regular reservations of the library meeting room and requested the first club sets of books. Club members know they can walk up to the library circulation desk at any time and simply say, I'm from Open Door Book Club, and someone will greet them with a smile and know what to do for them. Anna always guarantees enough books with a short turnaround period whether or not the library carries the book of choice in a set. She goes out of her way to reserve enough copies and for an extended period of time. If learners are late returning materials, Anna waves fines, so no one feels discouraged. It's highly unique that an urban librarian knows at least a dozen adult learners and literacy volunteers by face and often by name. Longtime member Edith had this to say about the book club and the library's impact on her. 
What I like most about my book club is that it is non-traditional. Since we meet most of the time at the library, we really focus on our book and we get to learn and appreciate our very diverse points of view, culture, customs, and backgrounds. Being a part of our book club has been very enriching to me. The book club has doubled in size over the past year because learners are bringing their library books to school and reading them at break time, and they share about their positive book club experience with others. Anna and East Lake Library are all about inclusivity and opportunity. Thank you, Anna and East Lake Library, for your partnership and support. Next, I'd like to present our Volunteer Service Awards. These awards are for volunteers who have served 1,000 hours or more in an adult literacy program. First up, we have Jeannie Snell from the Neighborhood House. Next, we have Richard Anderson from Vietnamese Social Services of Minnesota. Thank you to Jeannie and Richard for your fantastic work and dedication to literacy and learning. Next, our training director, Rod Palasic, will present the Outstanding Volunteer Awards. The Outstanding Volunteer Award is given to volunteers who not only dedicate their time and efforts to the many students they serve, but who also enhance their programs as a whole. First, I would like to congratulate tonight's honorable mentions in this category. Thank you and congratulations to Steve Erler from the Hub Center, Elaine Handelman from English Learning Center, Kristen Carlson Germain from the English Learning Center, Kelly Thomas from the English Learning Center, and Richard Anderson from Vietnamese Social Services of Minnesota. Now, please join me in congratulating the following outstanding volunteer award winners. First, Ann Kirill from Adult Academic Program. For over five years, Ann has volunteered in the EL Transitions Literacy class and in the resource room. In class, Ann works with small groups of students on their reading and vocabulary skills. Over the years, Ann has been instrumental in many of the students' reading successes. For over three years, Anne has also helped to run the school's resource room. The resource room is open every school day for one hour and is managed by volunteers and a staff member. Students come to the resource room and they need help with their life outside of school, such as reading mail, applying for jobs, filling out immigration forms, and more. During Anne's Monday shift, she always offers patience and guidance when students come in seeking help. To top it all off, Anne is a medical doctor. In the past, she has given a few students general medical advice, but is always careful to advise them to see their own doctor when necessary. Also, while wearing her doctor hat, Anne has participated in the school's annual resource fair when she has taken students' blood pressure and given advice if it's too high. Over the years, Anne's talents, patience, and kindness have touched many students. Sometimes students do not know exactly what job they want to apply for, only the field of work. Anne is able to talk through different considerations with students and find a job for them to apply for. She's a huge advocate for students. Our next award winner is Vince DeJournal from Neighborhood House. Vince has been a volunteer with Neighborhood House since 2017. Vince serves as a jack of all trades, working as a classroom assistant and one-on-one -on -one tutor with every level from beginning to college prep. His flexibility and patience allow him to spend an hour practicing reading with a beginning ELL student and then switch to doing algebra problems with a GED student. He has helped complete housing application forms, assisted students calling to get cell phone repairs, taught how to troubleshoot laptop problems, edited personal essays, spends hours in conversation discussing student-directed topics, and fielding questions about everything from politics to parenting tactics handling these challenges with tact, respect, and competence. Vince's greatest strength is his ability to engage with students and connect with them, and his patience allows students the space to gain confidence and push themselves. His respect for learners builds their trust and leads to greater learning success. For example, when a student needed to find a pro bono lawyer, Vince helped find the initial contact, but then worked together with the student so they were comfortable making the phone call. He then made sure they had the contact information and knew their next steps so the student felt ready to move forward on their own. 
Vince does things like this every week with students on every imaginable topic. It's rare to have a volunteer that you can trust as completely as Vince to handle such a variety of situations and contexts. Our next award winner is Julie Johnson from the Open Door Learning Center Midway. Julie has been a volunteer at Open Door Midway since 2013. She assists learners in the computer lab twice a week and helps them navigate barriers in their lives. Julie's support goes beyond helping learners on public computers. She is always looking for new ways to teach digital literacy. For example, a learner once told Julie that she had a laptop at home, but had never used it because she was afraid of breaking it. Julie encouraged the learner to bring it into class and the two of them practiced using it. After a few weeks, the learner was able to study in the lab without any technical assistance. Another time, Julie was conversing with a learner who was stressed out about getting accurate busing directions to an appointment. Julie taught the learner how to use Google Maps on his phone in order to have control over which route he wanted to take. Finally, Julie organized a flash drive giveaway to motivate learners to persevere through the Microsoft Word unit so that they could use their new skills to create and save resumes and cover letters that they could take with them wherever they went. For learners struggling with connecting with others online, Julie has created practice email and Facebook accounts. This sort of creative foresight has helped learners rekindle relationships with faraway family and friends, like a learner who was able to talk to her niece for the first time in months when they became Facebook friends. Thank you, Julie. Our next award winner is Bill Leslie from the Hub Center. Bill began volunteering with the Hub Center in 2015. He helps with both English and math classes, drawing on his TESOL certification and his background as a math teacher. Bill's flexibility and openness to learning new things has been helpful in both working with the newest learners, catching them up on the side so they're ready to jump into class, and working with advanced students who need assistance brushing up before a test. When working with students, Bill has a way of scaffolding and breaking things down into teachable nuggets, which makes it easier for students to understand. Bill can work with individuals, with small groups, or with the whole class. He keeps notes on what skills he's working on with students and on what skills each student has mastered or continues to need help with. Bill often has a different way to explain something that resonates with many students. Bill is as reliable as a postal carrier. He never misses. If students have a need, he is there, ready to help them. Currently, the school has begun the transition to online and distance learning due to COVID-19. Bill jumped on board right away. He's open to learning new platforms and ways of instruction, and then he runs with it. Bill has a calm, patient, friendly demeanor, and the students take no time warming up to him and his help. He is a volunteer coordinator's dream tutor. Our next award winner is Christian Knox from the English Learning Center. Christian has been a volunteer instructor with the English Learning Center since 2015, teaching and tutoring students preparing for their citizenship interviews. He has a great way of presenting the content in a clear and concise manner. It can be easy for students to get overwhelmed or confused by the amount of information they must know. But Christian has perfected a balance of dictation, citizenship jeopardy, writing practice, and mock interviews to ensure that students know the answers to all parts of the interview. He is great at providing routine for students. They know what to expect when entering his classroom, and they aren't afraid to ask him for help. Christian is able to bring the content to life in a way that keeps learners engaged. Word has gotten out that he is the teacher to go to for any and all citizenship studying purposes. He tracks student progress throughout their path to citizenship and keeps staff informed so the student can celebrate good news and support students throughout a large milestone in their lives. Christian has also volunteered in other civic participation ventures and offered to lend a hand to students filling out their census 2020 applications. These measures show his commitment to supporting students in civic engagement and ensures their representation in the community. Over the past five years, the English Learning Center estimates that Christian has helped nearly 50 learners get their U.S. citizenship. Congratulations and thank you to all of our volunteers for your dedication to literacy and to adult learners. Next, our Literacy Services Director, Kirsten Collins, will present the Outstanding Learner Award.
next awards of the night go to our outstanding learners and the Seal Fisher Award winners. Again this year, we're happy to be able to award our outstanding learner recipients with a $250 Lucille Fisher Award. This award celebrates the memory and work of Lucille Fisher, who was a beloved adult basic education teacher and the first instructional supervisor for the St. Paul Public Schools ABE GED program in 1970. Under Lucy's leadership, St. Paul became the first program in Minnesota to hold a GED graduation ceremony with caps and gowns. Lucy was also a founding member of the former professional organization, the Minnesota Association for Continuing Adult Education. We're grateful to the leadership team of this former professional organization for making these awards possible again this year. The first winner is Abdullahi Abdi from the English Learning Center. Abdullahi has been a student in the English Learning Center since 2018. He started in the beginning English class before moving up to English 1 and he is also in the math program and participates in Open Computer Lab. Abdullahi is an amazing leader in the computer lab. During Open Lab hours, students can practice English through a variety of platforms, and Abdullahi learned how to navigate websites, use a mouse and keyboard, and distinguish which platform is best for certain skills with minimal guidance from staff. He's a strong leadership presence in the lab and often assists new students with anything and everything. Abdullahi began assisting students a few months after coming to school. He noticed some students were struggling with certain digital literacy skills, like using a mouse, typing, and making their way through websites. Whenever a new face appears in the lab, Abdullahi is more than happy to show them what to do, where to go, and what rules to follow while in the lab. His leadership and kindness has helped so many students to access this valuable resource, and he's a phenomenal teacher. He's even dubbed himself half teacher, although staff feel he is fully committed to positive leadership. He inspires those around him to try their hardest, remain positive, and stay motivated to achieve their learning goals. Abdullahi travels from North Minneapolis by bus every day to come to school, and despite trying out other sites, he feels his role and responsibility at the ELC is something worth traveling over an hour for each day. The ELC is so lucky to have him as a student. Finally, Katherine Courtney from the Thomas M. Kramer Fund Committee will announce the Kramer Memorial Education Grant Fund Award winners. Hello, my name is Katherine Courtney. I am the chair of the Thomas M. Kramer Memorial Education Grant Fund of Literacy Minnesota. The fund was established with the memorial donations given to Literacy Minnesota, formerly known as the Minnesota Literacy Council, in memory of Tom Kramer, who at the time of his accidental death in 1995 was the president of the board of directors of the Literacy Council. He had also previously served as a basic reading tutor. The Kramer Fund's goals are to provide funds to adult students who are pursuing their education beyond adult literacy programs and who are in need of assistance in paying various costs related to pursuing their continuing education. The first grants were awarded in 2000 and have been periodically made since as funds have been available. Tom's involvement with Literacy Minnesota was inspired by his mother. She dropped out of school to assist in caring for her siblings. She then raised her own seven children. After she had seen all seven successfully graduate from high school and college, she went back to earn her GED. Because of her, Tom recognized the importance of lifelong learning. I would like to thank the other members of the Kramer Grant Fund Committee, Nancy Burke, Karen Flores, Tina Hoy, and Mary Ann McCauley, all served on the MLC board with Tom and three of them are former board presidents themselves, and one is a former board treasurer. Their commitment to MLC and the Kramer Grant Fund after all these years is commendable and remarkable. Karen Kramer and Monica Shaw are the newest members of the committee. They are both members of Tom Kramer's family. So to make the presentation, Adrian Gomez was sponsored by John Ashby of the Neighborhood House ABE program. John wrote, Adrian showed amazing perseverance, determination, and attitude. 
which will serve him well as he pursues further education and works toward his goal of gaining employment in the healthcare industry. Academically, Adrian showed a great ability to learn and retain new things. While in class, Adrian improved his reading score by three NRS levels. Adrian entered class quite unconfident about his math ability and left class with math being one of his strongest subjects. In many ways, Adrian became a math tutor for other students and his ability to explain information in Spanish to other Spanish speakers was very helpful. Neighborhood House adult education classes value community building in the classroom, and Adrian exemplified this value. He was kind and patient with fellow students, and he was always willing to help a classmate when they were struggling. Even after he passed the GED, Adrian regularly came back to classes to check in on the class and encourage the other students to keep studying and take tests when they were ready. Adrian initially brought his daughter to class and always engaged with her during class and showed her it was important to stay active in her education. By going to college, Adrian will set an example to his daughter, not only that advanced education can lead to better careers, but also that education is a lifelong pursuit. Adrian is enrolling in St. Paul College with the goal of becoming a phlebotomist technician. He plans to apply his grant to tuition. Adult education is so important. It allows us to develop new skills to become a better human being. And not only that, but it opens up so many opportunities in life. My name is Adrian Gomez, a recent GED graduate, and I'm enrolling in St. Paul College to become a phlebotomist technician. I would like to thank Minnesota Literacy Council for making this possible by selecting me and providing me with their support. I will always be grateful for your help as I try to reach out for my dream career. Thank you so much for your commitment and helping other people in need. It really makes a difference in our lives. Thank you, Minnesota Literacy Council. Eric Shabein was sponsored by Sarah Corrigan of the Open Door Learning Center. Sarah wrote, Eric is unique in that he ran the gauntlet of earning his GED twice, once in the late 1980s and once 20 years later after fire and water damage ruined the paper records of his earlier achievement. The day we threw a party for Eric to celebrate completion of his GED, I saw that Eric's chair had worn some marks into the linoleum floor over the 15 months he studied for his tests. This was a testament to his dedication. Eric not only doggedly continued his studies, but he kept an upbeat and constructive attitude. Eric is the perfect example of someone who succeeds through hard work and perseverance, even though learning doesn't always come easily. Eric is easygoing and enjoys being part of a team and supporting others' efforts. Despite being a caretaker for his elderly parent and needing physical therapy, Eric rarely misses a day of school and never takes time off for himself. Eric is enrolling in St. Paul College in the CNC toolmaking program to become a machinist and eventually program such machines. He plans to apply his grant for living expenses and for tools and supplies that he will need for classes. I'd just like to say thank you for being nominated for this. Uh, Minnesota Literacy Open Door, Sarah for putting my name out there, uh, everybody that's helped me get, get this all done, all the teachers and aides and all that stuff, and I appreciate it very much, and I'd just like to say thank you very much, and everybody be safe out there. God bless. Adrian and Eric, your accomplishments are impressive and we encourage your continuing education and wish you the best of luck. Tom and his mother would have been proud. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight and congratulations again to all of our award winners. As a reminder, please check in each Tuesday this month for more videos of Journeys Readers, the stories and poetry you will hear written and read by adult learners 
enrolled in adult basic education classes across Minnesota are sure to entertain and enlighten you, if not make you laugh and maybe cry. The 2020 Journeys book can be purchased online at literacymn.org journeys. Thanks again to everyone who made this event possible.